You told me that you got a friend for any type of man that you know for 100% fact that they will make your nigga fold. Yes, because when women tell me my man don't cheat, I be like, sis, I promise you, I call out one of my girls, you tell me where he gonna be, I bet you she will break him. I promise you. You got the password to that phone, that's not his only phone. You got it to that Instagram, that's not his only Instagram. And don't call me. If a female call my phone, I'm gonna make her cry. I'm gonna tell her things that maybe don't even exist. Oh. I'm going no. I'm going to tell her whatever. <laughs> don't call my phone. What's good? My name is Chris Dows. This is Trapping Anonymous. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, thank you, everybody that's been here supporting us, keeping the movement moving. We definitely appreciate y'all. Please make sure y'all go follow Trapping Anonymous on that Instagram. Go follow Breakbeat Media. We appreciate everybody that's been watching and just supporting and just, you know, bringing these topics to life, you know, like, uh, what more can we ask for? Uh, do remember that the stories you hear do not necessarily reflect real life. They're here to entertain, educate, or just keep your little homie off the streets. Uh, today we have Gold Digger Anonymous. Uh, Y'all are in for a treat. My name is Chris Styles, it's Trapping Anonymous. Let's get it. What's up? What's up? So, I like to jump right into my episodes. Uh, Let's get it. Today is not going to be anything different. So, you got this thing called the Triple D's. Talk to me about that. What is the triple D's for my listeners? The triple D's are dick, dollars, and dates. Dick, dollars, and dates. Okay. So, first of all, how do you get to that perspective? What brings you there? Okay. When you meet a man, right, you know he's trying to give up some dick. But along with that dick, I want dollars and dates. I still want you to wine and dine me. I still want you to give me money. I still want to do things as if I'm your girl without the responsibility of being your girl. So dick, dollars, and dates. How did you get to this, this way of thinking? What, what, was, what happened along the way to where you thought, like, a relationship is probably not for me? I'm going to just see if I could just get dick, dollars, or dates. Um... My best friend is a male. One of my closest cousins is a male. I'm surrounded by men all day. So I see things that they women will never see. So I have an inside look on things that most women will never be able to know. So I was like, I don't want to be her home, crying, upset, so I can still get the same thing she gets, except the headaches and the tears. But is there a part of you that wants that relationship? Is there a part of you that wants to be sort of monogamous and have the guy of your dreams and, you know, spoiled and... Um, I had it. I have it. When I'm in a relationship, when I meet a man who he's single and I'm single and we vibe and he's a part, he still gives dick dollars and dates, then maybe I'll keep him around longer. So I've had that, but then if he F up, I'm out. Are relationships off limits for you? No. No, they're not. What was the best arrangement that you had? with the guy? Um, he bought me things. He flew me out. He had a wife. She was home. Literally cancer dying. Oh my God. And she couldn't, she couldn't do anything for him. So, um, I kept him happy. Morally, sometimes are you there like, you know, his, his wife is dying. This is kind of, effed up? No, it's like the drug dealer is effed up when he's selling drugs to the community. Same thing. You don't think about it. You think about what you're going to benefit from. She's dying. Her time is up. I'm going to die. My time is going to be up. She was dying. He went home. I sent him home, but I had fun in the daytime. She couldn't do that for him. Did she know about you? I don't know. I don't ask her about her. What happens when you sort of get tied up into this lifestyle? Like, what happens when you actually like the guy and but this arrangement is happening? Are you able to always cut it off and make sure that it never intertwines? Or do you sometimes say, damn, I got feelings for this dude. Like, you know what I mean? I can't just keep using him for his money or the, the dates or the attention. You know what I'm saying? If he has a girl, I'm going to always use him for those things. I never, ever want him for myself. If he has someone, a wife, a girl, 
whatever. I always just want him for dick, dollars, and dates, and I send him home, and I never want him to be mine, because I already know that if I'm number two and she's number one, when she no longer is number one and I'm number one, the position is now open again for number two. Does monogamy exist? No. You, you can't just say that so confidently. Like, there is no couple in the world that is capable of having a monogamous relationship. For like two to three to five years, yes. After five years, no. One of them will go test the waters, rather it be from someone that they just met or someone that they always loved. There's always that person that you're in love with that they really have somebody else that they love, they just can't be with. And when he or she comes around, that person is gonna always get that person. Why are you so convinced of this? Because I know it, as I am that person as well. When I'm in a relationship, it's this one guy I never go around him. Because he's my guy that, no matter what, he always can get me. So I stay away from him. Mm. So most women are in relationships with somebody that um, not necessarily he's her best sex. She may love him, but he may not be her best sex. So she finds that guy who's her best sex. But maybe he's a street dude. Maybe he doesn't have the, um, the finances to support her. Or maybe he doesn't have the pension or whatever it is that she needs. Maybe he doesn't want children. So she just doesn't stay with him, but she still loves him. How many guys would you have on your roster at one time? Sexually? Sexually. The most, two. I never go really over two. And they're never back to back because remember they have girlfriends and wives, right? So say I have sex with somebody July 1st. I may have sex with somebody else July 28th. But I also go time when I don't have sex with anyone. And I'm celibate. And you're still able to get this money and... From older men, yes. But not the younger ones? No. The younger ones, you get, they want something after a while, yes. <laughs> They're gonna leave with something. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's it's so funny. So when I think about this, what is the largest age gap that you've dealt with a guy, you being the younger one and him being the older one? Sexually? Okay, let's go there. Sexually, um, I wanna say about nine years. Nine years. Financially, he was like, whew, twenty-five years older than me, maybe. And I couldn't, I was trying, but that whole sugar daddy thing mm. doesn't work for me. It gives me daddy vibes. They have the blue coming around the eyes. They have the throat, like the chill. It's not, it's not for me, right? So you could get money from them instantly. You go out on a date. Oh, you like that coat, baby? Yeah, okay, get it. You like that sugar, get it. But then when it's time to get down, to give the I can't. So I left him at the airport. I didn't, I didn't, I, I couldn't. He wanted to fly me, I was ready. But I was like, I gotta sleep with him? I couldn't, I can't. Two things I don't do is old and Caucasian. Wait, so why would you have him do pay for everything and have everything lead up to that moment to just leave him at the end? Why, why not just be like, fam, I can't do this? I didn't even know how to say it. It was the day of and I wanted to and I, I punked out. I was like, I'm gonna go on this island with him and I gotta sleep with him now, right? I was like, mm-mm, nope, can't, vomit. It's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be like my father. <laughs> Speaking of which, what are y'all relationships like? Me and my dad? Yeah. We cool, you know, we, he's, um, I don't wanna say what he is, but he's not from here. Mm. And he has a different mindset than Americans. So, I mean, we cool, but we're not like daddy, daughter, no. You know, we speak birthdays, holidays, but he's not like, oh, my daddy, but I still don't wanna sleep with somebody old enough to be with him, be him. Right. No. Um, do you think your father's, you and your father's relationship has impacted the way you see relationships? Or does it have an effect on it? Um, not really, because in my dad's relationship, he's actually what I think, I think he's faithful, right? I think my dad is a faithful man, he's God-fearing. But his wife, on the other hand, she wasn't, right? So she had a whole nother relationship while married to my dad. So, I always tell people, if the man is not cheating, sometimes the woman is. So I think my dad is a great man. He, he um, as far as he takes care of the kids that lived with him, he cooks, he goes to church, he comes straight home, but he married someone who he wasn't enough for. Yeah, when we were speaking earlier, you mentioned to me, even if the guy is the one that is committed, then the, the woman is the one that isn't. Like, there's no way that both people are 100% committed. Not after five years, no. Not, okay, you're giving it that five-year window. Three to five years is rough. Like, by the third year, 
you start to realize like, is this really working? I don't really like the way he or she does this. They nagging too much. Five years is like, yo, am I staying? Mm -hmm. Right? So I feel like most people are staying because of the mortgage or the children or at this point, try cheaper to keep her. But that's not always your person. If you didn't get them young, maybe y'all both came out the, y'all both broke each other's virginity. It's a possibility one of y'all gonna get cheated on. What's the youngest guy you've dealt with? He probably like six years. Um, I'm older than I look, and I have a son that's grown. So I don't like young boys. I don't want. I don't want the dude that's like he, his pants is hanging down. He needs all the designer sneakers. Like I gotta deal with that with my son. I want me a regular dude. He worried about his pension. And he's worried about a house, not the latest um, video. Speaking of your son, what do you say? To him, what what sort of example do you feel like you leave for him? You know, when he when he comes to dealing with other women, and maybe he wants to bring a girl home, or you know, because he has to watch his mom. He has to sort of that example that you set for him. Do you think that it sort of negatively impacts him or positively impacts him? The men that have wives don't get or girlfriends don't get to meet my son, so he don't see them. They don't come to my home when he's there. The ones that were my man, then he knows that that's my man. Mommy was with him three years, five years, whatever it is. But um, from a young age, I made my son, when he was like 12, buy a girl something. I was like, you you like her? Buy her something. So my son knows that you want to play, you got to pay a few dollars. Yeah, he knows that. I think all men should know that. Right. Sometimes when you say when you dealt with the older men, you couldn't give yourself sexually. So what does it cost you? You know, and cost is just such a, it's just a variety of things. But what does this lifestyle cost you? Cost me? Nothing. It costs them. I'm getting the same thing that, you're, that most men and women is getting minus the tears at night, asking you where you going, what time you be home, checking your social media. I don't get that. I get the vacations. I get to be with him because most men, they tell their woman they're going on a business trip. They tell them they're going away with their kids, and they don't. It's, it's ways around it. You know, I asked you that question because, for me, when I was, like, using women for money, I used to think, like, oh, okay, it's just lit for me. It's just is what it is. I don't care. I'm getting trips. I'm getting paid. I'm getting clothes. I'm getting all of these things. But then going to sleep and waking up to, next to somebody you don't really like, that course, or just talking to somebody that you know you're not really feeling like that, but you got to entertain it, entertain their jokes, knowing you don't want to really walk down the street with them, that shit is taxing, and it don't be worth the bread. It be You really reach a point where you like, you know what? Fuck your money. I can't do this with you because I'm not into you. So when I say... But so, you'd never hear me say I didn't like them. Never said that. The ones I don't like, I don't date. The ones I like, I date. He just happens to have somebody at home. Mm. I like them. If I didn't like them, I wouldn't even be around them. So I'd be like, oh, he's cute, he's swagged up. He try to holler, I don't try to holler first. I'm like, oh, you got a girl? Yeah, but you know, it's every dude story. It's Rocky, whatever. You know, we going through some things right now. Anyway. Correct, <laughs> correct. Right now, we just going through something. But I liked him, right? So I just know though, I keep in my mind that he doesn't belong to you. So you never deal with a guy that you don't actually like? No, because I won't be, my body won't open to him naturally. That's why I didn't go on the trip with the old man, because naturally I cannot spread ego if I don't like you. I have to like you. I need to kiss you, hug you, look you in your face when I'm riding you. I need to be able to do that. So it's not just using him for his money. His money is a part of it, but you're not gonna come to my house or meet at the telly or whatever we doing and dick me down and go home and I get nothing. I don't need it that night. Mm -hmm. Like if you're somebody who's gonna stay around, I don't need it that night. But if I say, oh babe, I wanna go to Bermuda. Rather you could come or not, I wanna go. Cause I can also afford that myself. But I feel like men expect women to like cater to them and you got a whole girl at home. But you paying her mortgage, you taking her on trips. What I get other than your sex? No. Was there a point in your life where you believed in a fairy tale? Would you believe that this was the guy for you? 
Will you believe that this is going to be what this is going to be? Absolutely. All women did. I believe that. And he told me one time, he said, um, I'm going to cheat until my dick fall off. He told me that. I was probably about, I was, he told me, I'm gonna cheat till my dick fall off. What? I promise you he told me that. Why would you even be invested in somebody that can have the bold face, like that, not even lie, but to bold face tell you the truth like that? Sometimes love is lying, right? <laughs> Sometimes love is, you know what? <laughs> That's when I realized that a man telling me the truth turns me on. That's when I realized something is wrong with you. Him telling me the truth, I was like, oh, okay. Now I knew where I stood, right? But I, I felt like my love language is protection. So as long as he makes sure I'm good, he tells those other chicks, like, listen, when I'm with her, don't speak to me, don't call me after seven. I was good with that. So when I'm walking down the street, I see girls looking at him, and I'm like, all right, you probably had him yesterday, but you can't speak to him today. Mm -hmm. And that's okay for me. So cheating is not a deal breaker for you? No. It depends how long he cheated. It depends if she got pregnant. It depends on if he was loving on her. But if he just had some little sex here and there, I want my man to have sex with one woman one time. Mm. Don't be staying. Get in and get out. Don't stay. I was speaking to you earlier, and um, we sort of got into the conversation about if women have that capability. To? Just sort of have sex with one guy and move on and have a sex with another guy and move on not feel anything not you know because we said that guys could just have a fling and feel absolutely nothing for the woman do women have that same capability i'm gonna speak for me and a few girls i know no I, every man that I ever laid down with, I liked him. Maybe not enough that I wanted to marry him, give him a kidney if he needed it, but enough that I wanted to make him feel good. I wanted to, even if he came over and I know he liked steak and I made his favorite meal, I liked that it made him feel good. So I've never slept with a man that I just didn't like and just walked away. I never even had a one night stand. Every dude I date comes back. Wow, I'm not even sure how to take that. <laughs> I've never had a one night stand. Oh, man. Um, what happens when you sort of see that role reversed? When you see yourself cashing out on the guy because maybe you're into him too much or maybe you like him a little too much and you just feel yourself being sort of the trick. I wish I could tell you something different, but the only time I ever really dropped big bags is on my man. That man that made me feel that I'm the only one. Because I never feel like you're the only one. I'm the first one, mm. right? I'm the top one. Mm. So if he's my man, he's coming home to me every night. He, um, we go on vacations. We doing family reunions. Oh, I spend a bag. Oh, where you want to go, babe? You want to go here for your vape? Let's go. Oh, babe, you want that? Let's go. You need new tires? Let's do that. I do that for my man. The other guys that's just giving dick dollars and dates, he may get some cologne. Yeah. He may get a watch, a hat, some sneakers. Yeah. yeah. But he ain't getting the bag. So if you're getting cologne, you ain't the one. No, because you're giving me dick dollars and dates. And I may use your dollars to get your cologne. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> Yo, you a trip. What is the wildest thing you think you've done for money? Right? And I mean, even to your standards, you're like, you know what? I don't know if I could do that no more. But you knew that you was going to get the bag or you knew the money was involved or the or opportunity was involved. I mean, it wasn't sexually. So, okay. I mean, because this is dick dollars and dates, right? Um, it wasn't sexual. So, you know, back in my day, I, I sold a little drugs, but I transported. But it wasn't nothing. I took stuff from, I don't know if I'm supposed to say where I'm from, but I took stuff from New York to Maryland. Oh. And um, that's what I did for money. I did that for the bag. And... Um, but sexually, I never did nothing crazy. Anything that I do sexually is because I want to do it. I tell women, if you want to give head, you do that because that's what you want to get to. You want to give anal, so I do whatever I want to do. He doesn't get to tell me what he wants, especially if he's not my man. What are the quality of men that you think that you meet? And I, and I ask that because sometimes we can sort of group all of these men into like one category, you know, like these guys are just, I only meet like this one type of guy or like these two types of guys do you think that you meet like these sort of like high quality high value type of men or do you think that you meet sort of like the same kind of guys that are past that five-year threshold that are just like 
you know, on a di or do you, does the quality vary? Do you think that you get some quality or do you think that it's all usually traditionally the same type of quality? The three real relationships I had, because I only had three real relationships that I brought home. Those relationships, those men were, those men were of quality, right? Like, they were, I love a man that's home. I don't like a man that's in the streets. I don't like my man at the club every day. I don't want him staying on line for sneakers. I need my man to be about his business, right? Wanting to be with family. So those three was my men. But the men that's in the street, and I'm just here for the dick dollars and dates, I don't care what he does. I don't care if he's a scammer. I don't care if he's an engineer. Because he doesn't belong to me. And I know that. So I come in. I get my dick, my dollars, and my dates. And if we last long, we do. And if we fade out, we do. It doesn't matter. And then he may come, he's going to probably come back and circle around. And if I'm free, I'll deal with him. If I'm not, I won't. What do you tell the younger version of yourself that speaks to that guy that you've fallen head over heels for, you know, what do you tell that younger version of yourself? I would tell myself, <laughs> that fairy tale don't exist, sis. That, that, that Huxaboo life you thought you was gonna have when you was 17, he's gonna cheat. And it's okay, right? Cause I look at even like parents. I don't think anybody can tell me that their parents didn't get cheated on. One of them, their mom or their dad, right? So. That's what it is, but it's about how you maintain yourself. Don't lose yourself. He cheats on you, don't lose yourself. Don't be crying all night. Just get up and start again. You told me that you got a friend or a friend for any type of man that you know for 100% fact that they will make your nigga fold. Yes, because when women tell me my man don't cheat, I be like, sis, I promise you, I call out one of my girls, you tell me where he's gonna be, I bet you she will break him. I promise you. You got the password to that phone, that's not his only phone. You got it to that Instagram, that's not his only Instagram. And don't call me. If a female call my phone, I'm gonna make her cry. I'm gonna tell her things that maybe don't even exist. Oh, I'm going, no. I'm gonna tell her whatever. <laughs> don't call my phone. What do you, what advice, what advice do you give your son about women? Um, that not all women, like my son thinks that most women cheat and you know, but his generation is different too, right? So when I tell him things, he thinks like, oh my, you old, that type of women don't exist. So he has to live it, but I do make him, I do let him know that, make sure that whoever you spend on, she, she, she'll also do it to you. Like don't give anybody something that they can't give themselves. So my son take women out to nice restaurants. My son buy nice gifts. My son help girls get passports when he in relationships. And that's what I like, because I, like I think a lot of black women want a good man, but they don't raise one. Mm -hmm. So if you want, your, you want somebody else's son to spend, you make your son spend too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't make my, I don't feel no way when my son be like, oh, my, I took her girl X, Y, and Z. I'm like, that was good. He's not a trick, but at the same time, he got to give up. Nobody should date anybody and don't give up nothing. What was the worst you've ever felt dealing with a guy? Probably staying as long as I did. Wow, it's interesting. And I, it was my son's father. I asked you the worst experience you had with a man or the worst time that you had with a man and it was the fact that you stayed too long. Because this life sort of has you in and out quickly. Next, what's this? Nope, uh, got that? Nope, uh. And the only regret you really have was staying too long. So you was meant for this life. Mm -hmm. I was. I don't think everybody's meant to bear children. I don't think everybody's meant to have a, a house and a white picket fence. It's like, I don't think everybody's meant to be married. I think people do it because that's what we're taught to do. They don't do it because that's what they want to do. They feel valid. Most women feel validated by having misses in the front of her name. But at the end of the day, she goes home to a house of horror mm. and she's miserable. I don't want to be miserable. But if I find a man that I love and he knows how to cheat and protect my peace, because I'm not asking him not to cheat. I'm asking him to protect my peace. If he knows how to protect my peace, we good. But the moment that you don't protect my peace, I'm going to turn this mother upside down. They're going to want to know how old you are. They don't need to know that. My name is Chris Dowes. This is Trapping Anonymous.